Just a dream. That could very easily be a reality for me, so it's time to do something about it. This is my old, terribly painted Coolmaster mod project system that I've been using on and off for something like eight years at this point. The biggest reason for me picking this system is that, beyond the fact that it's already built and I'm not using it much right now, it's also using the Coolmaster Master Case, a chassis designed for modularity, which includes, frankly, endless hard drive base. I've also made a little purchase, specifically three Seagate Exos X18 18 terabyte hard drives. In this video, I'm going to get the system up and running, which may or may not include switching to an APU to help save some power, but well, then I'm going to get it set up with, I think, TrueNAS Core as my operating system of choice. I use Unraid for my main production server, I call it Overkill because it's a 24 core Threadripper, but I think that TrueNAS is going to be a better fit for this off-site machine. So, let's get building. Now, I was going to replace the Ryzen 1700 that's been in here for something like five years with a Ryzen 3400G APU, meaning that I wouldn't need a graphics card installed for it to boot since it'll be running headless anyway, as in with no display attached. But even with a BIOS update, the board would not boot with the 3400G installed, so I've had to swap it back to the 1700, uh, but I did replace the RX 5600 XT that was in here with an RX 460. It will draw even less power at idle, so that's fine. I'm leaving the 16 gigabytes of basic Crucial DDR4 that's been in here for years because it's been perfectly reliable for me, which is what I care about most here. I'm also installing a Corsair MP300 240 gig SSD as my boot drive. It might also act as a cache, although I'm yet to decide that and obviously set anything up. So we'll see how we go. Next is the hard drive cages. Now, because I'm using the Master Case, it's a frankly brilliant and very modular chassis. I have a two bay drive cage already in the bottom that comes by default, and then I'm adding another two bay drive bay uh, underneath, or I suppose on top, and then another three bay uh, sort of drive cage above that. They just push into some slots in the back and use two thumb screws to secure themselves in. But why seven drive bays? Well, first because I want to space these drives out so that they don't overheat, and second, if I want to add drives later on to the pool, you know, if I suddenly run out of space, having these already in here makes it even easier, I just need to bring a drive, I've even left a SATA cable in there for me in the future. The drives themselves just clip into the drive sleds and then slide into place. I've also added a 140mm fan up front to blow air directly over the drives for an extra bit of peace of mind. Right, so that is the system ready to go. Now we need to install TrueNAS. I've got it on a bootable USB stick that I made using Rufus, so let's get it installed. I first went through the BIOS, enabling all of the virtualization and IOMMU and SRIOV settings, just in case I want to run in any Docker containers, VMs, or do anything like GPU pass-through for acceleration. Then you just boot from your USB stick, install TrueNAS, set an admin password, and then in my case, I'm gonna go stick this downstairs where I have better direct ethernet to do the initial setup, and then start transferring over my files. So let me get this downstairs, grab a monitor up here, and I'll walk you through that part of the setup too. So the first thing I'm gonna do is set up a new storage pool. So you head to storage, pools, uh, press add, and then you're going to create a new one, and in my case, I gave it a name, TTGB off, site makes sense to me. You're going to add all of the disks that you want to be in your storage pool. Now, uh, TrueNAS is incredibly configurable and scalable, so you can easily have multiple pools of drives. But in my case, I'm keeping it nice and simple, and I'm just pushing all of the drives to the, uh, the VDEV that we're creating. And then down at the bottom, you can select what 
uh, type of uh, mirroring or uh, red Z in this case you want to use. You can press the little drop down. Uh, and so Stripe is essentially RAID 0, where it is not secure in any way possible, but it is the fastest to write to. Basically, it just splits the data up as it gets written in, and it gets written to all of the drives simultaneously, which is very fast, but it is incredibly insecure because if any of those drives die or disconnect or whatever, all of your data is gone. As for mirroring, that's normally when you have an even number of drives. So uh, if you have two drives, for example, mirroring is normally a good solution because you have uh, all the data basically gets duplicated between the two drives, so that's fine. In my case, I am using RAID Z here, which is a part of the ZFS file system, a very, uh, very impressive file system, and probably my favorite if I'm being honest. Um, and what that means is that essentially it's similar to, in this case, RAID 5, where one of these drives is going to be acting as a parity disk, and then the other two are available for storage, which is why we have an estimated capacity of 32 0.76 terabytes of usable space because it's taking two of these drives worth of capacity and adding them together and then one of these drives is the parity disk. So I've created the poll and I've gone into the settings to show you what the different options you can do or change with your storage pool especially when there's no data on it and you know it's nice and easy to, to configure these things but um, one of the first things you'll see is the compression level. You can change what algorithm it uses to compress your data. LZ4 is default but you can use gzip or ZFS specific ones, uh, which there's a lot of those options. You can also have a ZFS deduplication where uh, it will deduplicate those files, which improves storage capacity, but it's a very RAM intensive task because it has to search through those files. Uh, and uh, there's a, a very specific warning, deduplicated data cannot be undeduplicated. Once it's deleted, it's gone. You do have things like checksum, read-only, uh, snapshot directories, and even the record size, which we might tweak with, uh, because a lot of these files are larger and video files, but we'll see how that goes. The next thing we'll need to do is create a new shared folder, a new way to actually put data on to those drives, and you do that through a Windows or a Samba share, at least in my case. You go to sharing and then Windows shares, uh, give it a name, in my case I've named it the same thing as the pool so that it keeps it nice and simple, uh, and I've selected the advanced options just to show you what's available here, but you can do things like allow guest access, uh, and there's also defaults or different presets that you can uh, change, so if you need to use this as a time machine for Apple devices, uh, but you still want to use Samba to do that, you can do that here, you can make it more private with uh, different, you know, uh, read-only options or uh, even export uh, exporting the recycle bin which is quite handy to have I have that on my QNAP NAS and it's quite handy but um, yeah you basically just create your new folder uh, and then we're gonna go through things like permissions uh, enable the service and then we will be good to go I've also just created a new user account for me uh, and it's a good idea to not use the root or admin accounts where possible especially for in my case I just want access to the pull tool to put data in I don't need root access to the entire system just to do that. So I've created a new user account and I've applied the permissions to the share that we created to my account so that that account can access that uh, folder and that share. And then the next thing to do is probably start putting data on it and start copying everything that I've got. But I also need to work out a way to uh, programmatically do that. I could use rsync or there's a load of other different options I can do, but because I'm syncing from two different NASes, I'm gonna have a think come back to you and uh, I'll let you know in just a second. It'll be a split second for you, but probably several hours for me. I also need to work out how I'm going to connect to this system when it is not here, when it is off size. Uh, in theory, I do already have my overkill NAS running a VPN for me, which works great, but because this is remote and I need to push data to this rather than pull data from it, it's a little bit more complicated, so I'll have to have a think about that as well. So it's actually been a couple of days since I filmed the clip that you just saw because I've been going back and forth over how I want to get the data onto the, the off-site NAS. Originally, I was just thinking of using rsync for both since the QNAP and NAP NAS, the, the hybrid backup assistant 3 or whatever it's called, 
has an rsync function built in and that's actually what I went with for the QNAP NAS. That's all set up and it's actually copied all of the 6.6 .6 terabytes worth of data that I have on that NAS to the, the offsite one that's nice and backed up. As for Unraid, that was a little bit more difficult because Unraid, while it does have rsync installed by default, it doesn't have an easy way for me to get used to it or to, to actually use it. Uh, and so that's still a point of contention, but I'm pretty sure that is what I'm going to end up going with anyway. I tried a number of other solutions, things like Sync Thing, which did seem to be a good solution if I didn't have 20 plus terabytes of data, because it was going to take five days just to scan the drives, and then probably another like month just to copy the data. So uh, I didn't go with that one. I tried, uh, was it Rizzoli or basically BitTorrent Sync? Um, and that's, I couldn't really work out how that was meant to work from, you know, backing up an ass. It looked more like a uh, file sharing protocol rather than a, you know, sort of syncing protocol. Um, and so I actually even asked uh, Wendell from Level and Text uh, for his advice. And uh, his answer was basically write a script that runs rsync or rclone. Uh, and so that's basically what I'm doing. It's going to take a fair while to get all, I think, 22 terabytes or so of data that I currently have on both of my NASes onto this to, to back them up. But once it is all synced, I'll be setting up a, a scheduled syncing job. And more importantly, the off-site part of this backup is that I'm going to be handing the system off to a friend who lives far enough away that if my house were to, you know, get flooded or something uh, and I lose all my data, you know, my drives die up here, I can have a, you know, remote enough copy, but also they're not so far away that if I need to uh, go pick up this system to, you know, bring it back can either work off of it locally until I can repair my you know main production server or if I just need a faster way to uh, back up or restore rather than over the internet that's also not the end of the world it would actually be time effective for me to go and pick it up bring it back install 10 gig nick and then copy that way so yeah that's the plan anyway but with that said that is a look at my new off-site backup server uh, I'm unlikely to be building my own backup server again anytime soon, but I do want to build a few sort of, well, NASes and servers for some other content creators. So if that's something you're interested in, feel free to both let me know in the comments down below and hit the subscribe button as well. There's also plenty of other videos on the channel you can check out, including more actual NAS builds, but also more standard tech reviews and even my own hardware like the open source response time tool. Also, if you want to pick up or check out these uh, Seagate Exos 18TB uh, drives, these are an incredible value right now. I think I paid £270 per drive, which for 18TB of storage is a pretty good deal. I'll leave some links to those in the description as well. Also, if you just want to support the channel, you can do so through YouTube, Patreon, pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one, or a load of other designs that I made myself, or there's also some of their affiliate links, places like Overclock GK, if you're buying hard drives or systems or whatever from there, that's linked in the description as well. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, we'll see you on the next video.